The no November 26, 2012 meeting of the Agenda Charter Committee will now come to order. Will the clerk call the roll, please? Chairwoman Boyce? Here. Ms. Cayley? Here. Mr. McCann? Here. Mr. Rocco? Here. Mr. Wilcox? Here. Is there anyone signed up for the public forum? There is not. Does anybody like to speak? Oh, I don't see anybody. Okay. Public forum closed. Um, approval of the minutes. Um, the next agenda item is approval of minutes. Uh, you will have um, the October 22nd, 2012 minutes before you. They will stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any changes by the end of the day. Uh, new business. Referral 12-313, enact a local law authorizing. Moved by Mr. McCann, seconded by Mr. Rocco. Discussion on the matter. Ms. Kelly. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I just had a couple of questions. Um, certainly this is, makes sense to me, but I just wanted to get a little bit of history on it. Uh, through you, uh, through the chair, can I, can I ask what precipitated this move, why it wasn't done prior to this? Through the chair, um, this, uh, this uh, we weren't aware of the local law as we learned many counties were not. It was enacted in 1996, but the New York State Sheriff's Association sent uh, information out last year asking if any counties had taken advantage of the provisions of the local law and found out that only four counties at the time even knew about it. So when we became aware and began looking at it, we obviously decided that although the vast majority of our inmates do not have health insurance, it would obviously be worth our while to do it. Thank you. Um, it's like through you, I'd, I'd almost ask, could you send us the original letter? <laughs> From the New York, it was a, it was through survey mon I monkey. Know. But no, I know. No, I'm can... saying when they first, through you, when they first, you know, sent out the notice that you could possibly do this all that time ago, but that's just a side. Um, through you to the chair, do you, since you've already said that it's it's a small number of, of inmates that might have private insurance that you might be billing back to, do you have an estimate of what type of revenue it might um, might uh, bring back into the county and is it budgeted at anywhere in the 2013 budget estimates? Through the chair, uh, Scott Adair, Director of Finance. Um, effectively, there's no revenue coming back to the county for this. Right. This would be service providers actually billing the third party insurance company. That's right, thank you. Um, it, it, and just lastly, uh, through the chair, does this change the way drastically or not drastically the way that um, healthcare is administered within the jail? Through the chair, it will not change the administration of healthcare at all. We're required to provide it. We will continue to provide it. It will just change the way that it's built after it's been provided. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Mr. Wilcox? Thank you. Um, through the chair to the administration, um, I did understand that you said there would be no revenues. Will there be any savings? Through the chair, there's a potential for savings. Uh, as you're aware, we have a jail medical contract currently, and that's what's budgeted for. Uh, sometimes there's a there's a ceiling to what that dollar amount is, and if in, in fact we were to be able to offset some of the costs that we incurred there, there could actually be a savings on that contract. It could lower the overall cost of the program, uh, but that's to be seen, and we don't anticipate there being a significant impact in this upcoming year. I think as we move forward and see what the history provides us, we'll be able to, to quote unquote, budget for that more uh, accurately or effectively. Thank you. I appreciate that answer, and I just want to ask a follow-up question of uh, respect to the, the potential savings. Um, are any of those potential savings in the budget now, or? They through, reflected in the budget? I, I apologize. Through, through the chair, no. I, I, okay. I tried to answer yeah. that question with no. my last one, but okay. no, they're not uh, okay. because we don't am, anticipate okay. a significant okay. impact. Uh, and again, we'll wait to we see what the history pairs okay. out for us to be able to determine what that Makes is sense. for next year's budget. Right. And I, I have a few more questions, so I apologize in advance for them. Through the um, chair. Through the okay. chair. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering, does 
does do you does anyone in, in the administration um, know whether or not this uh, local law would permit um, uh, providers of these services who are not in insurance companies' networks to bill for services when the contract um, may in fact only uh, provide for uh, reimbursement for services uh, provided by an in-network provider. I can probably try to rephrase that. <laughs> you might want to rephrase it. I don't think I understand your question. Yeah, d d w w if, if, a, if a, an in inmate who has insurance is out of network, do you believe this local law will allow them to uh, allow the provider to bill for those services? Through the chair, I believe that um, the, the quick answer to that would be is you can always bill for the services sure, yeah. and attempt to Absolutely. recover some of those costs. Um, I guess that would be one of the ongoing issues that we all face personally when we're dealing with health insurance uh, regarding charges that are uh, covered under our insurance plan or not. And I would assume that the okay. folks from the Sheriff's Department would con pursue this aggressively from the standpoint of making sure that they got as much uh, reimbursement as possible through the program. Uh, as they move forward. Thank you. Through, through the chair, then that that's actually an interesting point because that reminds me a lot of EI in that respect, um, early intervention program where uh, if the service is provided by an out-of-network provider, um, it's not reimbursable. Um, but yet you're actually under under law right now, I believe you're actually allowed to, prov to bill for services if an in-network provider provides those services. Is there any reason why we're not allowing in-network providers? Are these all out-of-network providers? Because under the current law, I, I apologize, let me just, I just want to make sure I'm clear. I have a tendency to be not so clear. So um, the, the neuroservices that are provided um, currently, if they're provided in-network, there's nothing in the law right now that prevents you or prohibits you from billing for those services. Through the chair, I think the answer to that question is the fact that without the information being provided to the medical provider to bill for those services, it can't happen. This law allows for the Sheriff's Department and the information that they obtain about a third party insurance that an inmate may have to provide that to the medical uh, community in order to, to bill that third party insurance. But at this point in time, uh, again, I think the reality of the situation is, is we don't anticipate this being a significant increase as far as volume goes, but uh, the reality of that is, is that if, in fact, there was a third-party insurance provider, it would be up to the provider to ask us for that information. This law allows us to now provide that information to them. I, I apologize. I just wanted to try, try to make sure I understand your, your answer because the way I understand it now is there's no prohibition from billing currently. What, what is the barrier to billing currently without this local law? Through the chair, pursuant to the corrections law of New York State, the Monroe County Sheriff is required to provide services quote unquote free of charge. So take all of your mm -hmm. you know, postulated scenario out of it the, the requirement under the correction law is that we provide inmates whatever they need medically and dentally free of charge. And if we want any mechanism of recouping that pursuant to the correction law, we have to pass a local law. So you, you think the current insurance law, chair, I'm sorry, through the chair, do you, so you believe the current insurance law is in conflict with um, the corrections law? I don't believe that the current insurance law trumps the corrections law, and I believe that the corrections law provides a mechanism for them to be compatible, which is pass the local law, right. which will allow for the reimbursement. Through, through the chair, I just, again, I just want to clarify. So you, you do believe that right now, even though the, um, it would be free of charge to the, to the inmate currently, if they had insurance, if you were just the provider was billing the insurer, it'd still be free of charge. So I'm sort of not, I'm not clear on what it's, the local law would permit you to do that you cannot currently do. 
through the chair, it's not just that it's free of charge, it's free of charge as provided by the Monroe County Sheriff. So that corrections law requires the Sheriff's Office to provide to the inmate whatever that inmate needs at no cost. And the only mechanism that we have, per, and it's written into the correction law to recoup some of that for those few that actually have insurance is to pass the local law. So again, for point of clarification, I mean, I'd like to get a, to clarify again your answer because I'm a little confused by it. So through the chair, isn't any service provided at a cost, whether it's not to the taxpayer? I guess I'm not, I'm not understanding your explanation of the the difference between this, this local law and the current law with respect to insurance, um, billing, billing the insurance companies, isn't any service provided at a cost right now, regardless of whether or not you bill the insurer? It's not provided at a cost mm -hmm. to the inmate. Right, it's neither would, and it, through the chair, neither would it be if you billed the insurer. Additional cost. It's no additional cost. I will attempt to do this, um, <laughs> and I'm not sure I'll be successful. The sheriff's, the provider of the service, let's just call it the hospital, has the ability to bill the third party insurer. The Monroe County Sheriff's Department does not have the ability to bill the third party insurance provider currently under law because they're not the provider of the service, even though they're paying for the service. So with the passage of this local law, what effectively happens is that the Sheriff's Department provides this information to the third part, to the hospital to bill that person correct, to bill that person appropriately, the third party insurance company appropriately. So there's no, there's no way for the Sheriff's Department today to go and bill the third party insurance company. This allows, the local law allows the Sheriff's Department to pass the information to the hospital to bill the third party insurance company to offset some of the Sheriff's free of charge in, uh, coverage here. So through the chair, uh, to, to Mr. Adair, I, I actually get what, what you're, but, what you're saying, you want to pass along information. You're saying this allows you to pass along information to the hospital, for instance. Um, the hospital doesn't have the information on whether or not that person has insurance. Sure, they, they actually do. There's whole databases that the Through the chair, I think that's an incorrect assumption on your part. What, I think this is a jail inmate that's being brought in by us in the mm -hmm. sheriff's department from the jail to the medical facility to, be, to have services provided to them. So the transmission of that information is not necessarily as clear cut as you or I walking into the hospital to be provided a service to have the third party insurance company billed for. Again, through the chair. Um, I understand what you're saying, but I guess I'm sort of curious as to why that information can't be passed along now. The information cannot be passed along now. Through the chair, it's, it's our understanding that we are required by the state to have this correction, this local law passed in order to do that, to, to provide that information to the third part, to, not the third party, sorry, to the hospital. And, that, and I'm sorry, what, where did you read that in the, in the state law? Is that, do you believe that's under the corrections law, 500H, section 500H2? Through the chair, that is correct, yes. I, I read that section and I, don't believe it says that that's anything about passing along information in there. I guess, I, uh, through the chair, I guess what I'm just trying to figure out is why we need this local law. I believe everything we're asking to do, we're already permitted to do. Through the chair, that's not our understanding. In, Otherwise, we wouldn't be asking you to pass this local law. We right. would be doing exactly what you suggest that we're not doing today. We're not doing that because we don't have a mechanism. We don't have a legal mechanism to be able to do that. Passing this local law allows us the opportunity to do exactly what we believe we should be doing as we move forward. And, and through the chair, I believe the insurance contract absolutely allows you to do that when the service is provided by an in-network provider or if you have an out-of-network 
coverage that the out of network uh, provider would also be reimbursed. Uh, the, transmission, the transmission of information between the sheriff's department and the, uh, the actual provider of the services, um, that's not dealt with here and frankly I'm not sure why you can't do that now. Do you not transmit data about prisoners back and forth between different agencies? Through, through the chair, I, I think where, where we're at at this point in time mm -hmm. is the fact that um, our lawyers, both internally in the Sheriff's Department and our County Law Department have looked at this and believe the only way for us to do this legally, and it may differ from your legal opinion on, on this subject matter, but the only way for us to do this is to pass this local law. Okay. If we don't pass a local law, then we're not, we're not in compliance with the correctional law to be able to do exactly what we're suggesting we would like to do. Right. And, and okay. one last as, as one the last chair. question okay. to well, the chair because okay. I think I, this is all, all I'm I want. Not gonna, I don't want to get in a debate with with our. No, just asking questions, and I'm not debating. So you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna this is my last that. question. Okay, thank you. Um, because thank you. honestly, I, I think they're doing their best to answer my questions. Okay. Um, I think we we have sort of run into a sort of it's a, sort of an impasse. I guess I'm just curious whether or not I, we would be able to uh, see that legal opinion um, why this is necessary. Um, that would be very helpful if the administration could provide that um, analysis of why the current law as written would not permit you to bill for those services. That's, that's, I've just, that's the question, whether or not I'd be able to, whether or not I'd okay. be able to get a copy of that legal opinion or interpretation. I'm sure, I'm sure that you would be able to provide that. If not, I'm sure that you could look it up on the internet because I think it's. I've already, I've already looked it up. I'm just did? saying okay. that's why I'm asking. I, Actually, yeah, yes, okay. I, I have looked up the various strat statutes yeah. in the insurance law and, uh, and the corrections law, and okay. I do believe that the current insurance law allows this, that it is permissible already. So I would just sort of, again, I'm not, I, I'm not liberty, I have not seen the entire um, analysis of, uh, of the New York State uh, corrections law and uh, the insurance law to be able to determine whether or not um, we're currently allowed to do this, but I believe we are. If you have something that indicates otherwise, I'd love to see it. Okay. Ms. Kelly, one question? Yeah. Okay. Just one question. Thank no. you, Madam Chair. And, I'm, and I, I'll ask and I'll, I'll ask for it to be just in written form. Um, through my colleagues' questions, I have come up with a different concern as to how this would proceed, not, not so much that we can, but a question. If an inmate has an insurance policy that requires uh, more of a copay, not our problem, certainly, um, or more of a reimbursement structure and uh, than we uh, have or anyone else has. When you trigger a, a payback from one institution to another and it goes against the costs of that insurance company, the, uh, the inmate's family may actually be billed back for part of the costs. Those costs, if I understand, would, would be still covered by the sheriff's department um, according to the corrections law because we have to pay for health care. So through the scenario of if you triggered a billing for services on a third par on an inmate's insurance company and that triggered payments to the family that had to be done against whatever the insurance company covers um, how would the sheriffs, would the county handle that particular thing? And I'm not going to ask for an answer. Uh, I guess at this point, I would ask that you look at that to see what you would do, and then you could just jot me a line because I can see it triggering expenses to the family, which could cause a hardship depending on who's responsible for paying for the insurance. To the chair, I think if I understand the question correctly, it would be what winds up in yours or my mailbox as far as our copay goes. The family can't support that. Exactly. Again, uh, going back to the original conversation that the sheriff is required to provide services. Um, and I, again, not having a process in place today because we don't even have a local law in place today to be able to do that, uh, those mechanisms would be worked out internally in order to make sure that that family was not uh, obliged to pay the $30 copay or whatever that copay may be that they were unable to afford um, so that ultimately the cost to the inmate would be free of charge. Thank you. Uh, and then I, I guess when that, when that happens, when that procedures happens, 
if that could come back through us so we could just see what the procedure is for that of communication, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. And, and just so I, I understand this correctly, what, to, also can, what you're, oh, Can sorry. I just interrupt for one second you to the chair? Uh, because we generally don't bring back uh, an internal procedure or mechanism as far as bill payment goes. It would be the same process as any other bill that was presented to the county as far as a payment goes. Through the chair, what I meant was um, the procedure of inform of instructions to the family if they were presented with a bill from a from their insurance carrier. In other words, there would be some type of communication mechanism. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. I just I have one question, I guess, um, and that is with regards to Medicaid reimbursement. Um, this doesn't, you know, you talk about the population, there may not be many third party insurance, but there may be plenty of Medicaid reimbursements. Does this cover this as well? Through the charities, our understanding, yes, this would okay. be provided through Medicaid, yes. Okay, thank you. Anything further? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Any un Is there any unfinished business that to come before this committee? Seeing none, we'll adjourn this committee. Uh, the next uh, meeting will be December 17th, 2012.